All right, you're a Windows user and you want to get Docker working. So let's get you to it. In this lecture, you're going to learn the two types of containers that can now run on Windows. You're going to get through which Docker edition you want to install but based on your version of Windows and your um, edition of Windows. You're also going to learn the difference between Windows 10 and Server 2016 and how the desktop and server treat Docker a little bit differently. And then the next lecture is going to get to installing it. There are two types of containers now on Windows, which is really cool. We have the options now for Linux containers, or up until recently, we just called them containers because that was the only type of container we had. Now we have Windows containers. Now, this course by default is actually going to talk about Linux containers because we've had those for four plus years and that's everything that we all know about containers was Linux based. It was only until late 2016 that Microsoft really formalized the concept of a Windows container and made it usable, and they're rapidly innovating. So it's a pretty exciting space, but most of the concepts are the same. You're gonna use them the same way, you're gonna manage them the same way. It just matters the binaries that are running inside them, you know, SQL EXE versus MySQL on Linux or something. So we're gonna talk in this course about containers. When I say that, I really mean Linux containers. When I talk about specifically on Windows containers, I will say Windows containers so that we're clear, okay? And the best version of Docker on Windows is Docker for Windows. That's actually an addition of Docker. And it's got a whole install that we'll see in a moment. And it's really great on Windows 10. It only works on Pro and Enterprise, unfortunately. If you have the home version of Windows 10 or an older version of Windows, it's not gonna work. In those cases, you're gonna use the Docker Toolbox, which was the only option we had until a year ago. So it's still a great option. It's still updated. It's still supported. It's just not gonna have all the nice, uh, cool features that Docker for Windows has because Windows 10 has new innovations in it using Hyper-V that we just don't get in those old versions, unfortunately, of Windows. Now, with Server 2016, it does support Windows containers. We won't go on a whole lot into that in this course because that's still really new stuff and they're making major changes. Even just three or four months ago, they added a whole new networking feature set to it. So it's a rapidly evolving ecosystem. I will continue to update this course and any other courses with all that stuff as well. And just as an example of what that's like is we had in the spring, not only this new networking uh, overlay networking that you'll get into later in the course, but we also have native Linux containers that we haven't even seen yet, but Windows announced it at DockerCon. And that basically is some feature we're gonna see in the near future that supposedly will have Windows intelligently and automatically figuring out when you run a, run a container, whether it should be on Linux or Windows, and then do that for you. Today, we have to manually specify. They're supposedly gonna make some new feature in the future that works on that. That's something that nobody else is doing. No other platform is doing that. So it's pretty cool to be on Windows. It's just evolving rapidly, so be prepared. So if you're on Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise, you're one of the lucky few that get to actually run Docker for Windows. And you can get that from store.docker.com. It's actually got more features than if you just installed Linux in a Linux VM on your machine. So if you're tempted to just say, screw it, I'm just gonna install Linux VM and I'm gonna install Linux on it. Well, that would work like a server in the cloud, like a Linux production server might. But the Docker for Windows and the Docker toolboxes are really helping you develop and test stuff locally. So it does things like map drives from your host operating system into the container. And we'll get to that stuff later, but it's worth trying, okay, before you go that other route. In the background, Docker for Windows is actually using Hyper-V, which uses a tiny little Linux VM for the Linux containers. So if you're on Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise right now and you have VirtualBox or VMware, they may not work with Hyper-V. I know, um, VirtualBox and Hyper-V don't play well together. So you may have to Google around the internet for solutions on trying to get those to work right if you want to use both. Personally, I just decided to shift everything into Hyper-V once uh, Docker shifted into Hyper-V. It is PowerShell native, which means in this course, if you're on Docker for Windows, I expect you to be using PowerShell and I will show you commands on how to do that.
You can get other shells to work if you're a shell ninja and you like bash or you like the old command prompt. That's fine. On Docker for Windows 7, 8, and 10 Home, we're gonna use the Docker Toolbox, which is not as fancy as the Docker for Windows, but it's still great, still works fine. You could use it every day. Like others, you're gonna download that at store.docker.com, and it does run a tiny little Linux VM in the background, and it uses VirtualBox, and it uses a command line called Docker Machine to manage that VirtualBox, and you'll see that later in the course as well. If you just wanna learn how Docker Machine works right now, you can actually just go Google it, and it'll give you great instructions on how you use Docker Machine command line to create VMs and destroy them. You can actually create multiple Docker machines if you wanted. Now, in this machine that it comes by default with the toolbox, it comes with a bash shell called the Docker Quick Start uh, Terminal, I believe is what it's called. And that's what I expect you to use in this course. That's the one that's going to work the best. It's gonna auto start things and make sure everything's working correctly. If you're more savvy and you wanted to get into other options for shells, I might give you some tips along the way, but I can't really support every shell and every possible configuration for your environment. So I'm gonna focus on how Docker provides it out of the box. Note that those versions of Windows that we're talking about right now do not support the Windows containers. They only support the Linux containers in that small little VM. And lastly, just a note about Windows Server 2016, as it is a part of this course, and it supports Windows native containers. So it, it runs a Windows binary out of the box without Hyper-V or anything installed in a Docker container, which is pretty cool. It does also support Docker for Windows, but Docker for Windows is really a toolkit for local development and testing. It's not meant as a production tool. So the only reason I would tell you to do this is if you had Windows Server installed on your local machine as a replacement for Windows 10, right? Some developers do that. They develop locally on Windows Server because that's the platform they use in production and they like to develop on their, that platform. So if you're doing that, totally install Docker for Windows. It'll give you a better experience. But if you're in production, don't do that. You really wanna run Docker Windows containers natively on server 2016. And if you're gonna do Linux containers, you run those natively on Linux, not on Docker for Windows in production. The uh, previous versions of Windows don't really support anything with Docker, um, unless you're talking about a previous version of Windows that's running Hyper-V, and that's running on your bare metal, and then you just run a Linux VM. Of course you can do that. You can do that anywhere. Anywhere you can run a VM, you can put Linux on it, and that can run Docker. So that one is definitely still on the table if that's the way you wanna go. But in this course, I'm not going to expect you to be developing and testing on server 2016. I'll assume that you're on Windows 10 or uh, Ubuntu or uh, Mac or something.